the difference between aura and mixed net or tour is uh, there's two things one is the concept of assignment in mixed net or tour there is no assignment uh, parties just want to send message and receive it uh, and the second difference is that um, uh, the the, send, the sender already knows to whom he wants to send the message, which is not the case here in Aura, because the data owner doesn't know the receiver, the party. Uh, the second line of research related to Aura is non-interactive anonymous router, which was presented in Eurocrypt 2021. And uh, it is very close concept because they also have uh, the concept of allocation, uh, assignment, the sen between a sender and receiver. But the difference uh, with our work is that there is two main phase, phase, assignment phase and messaging phase. And they don't go, they don't mind about uh, assignment phase. Uh, they just uh, focus on the messaging phase to be uh, non-interactive. And for this, they have a central router that uh, uh, allocates the message between sender and receiver. And this router doesn't know the assignment. But the point is that uh, they use uh, multi-client functional encryption. And the authority of functional encryption knows the assignment. Uh, while in Aura, as I said, the main focus is on the assignment and there is no authority uh, here. Uh, but as a disadvantage is that we don't have central router and uh, it's the party who should go and search for their message and pick it up. Uh, another uh, concept is oblivious transfer, which is between one sender and one receiver. The sender wants to send a different message. Uh, this receiver should pick up uh, pick one of them without knowing what are the others. Here you have just one sender and one receiver, but uh, in Aura we have many uh, senders, many receivers, uh, which make it a different problem. Okay, let's start to build Aura. Aura has um, four main phase, anonymity phase, which is mainly based on the idea of Mixnet, which is uh, randomized and shuffle. I uh, have shown it with uh, R and S, randomized and shuffle. Uh, in this phase, uh, we try to hide uh, the identity of the party. And when it is done, we go to the next phase, which is allocation phase. We allocate uh, data to the parties. And when it is done, we go to the messaging phase that now uh, the data owner can send their data to the parties. And finally, parties uh, uh, that has received the message, the data, decrypt the message and they reveal themselves. Okay, let's start with the anonymity phase. Uh, I would give you the intuition here by a card game. Uh, imagine that you have a several party and you want to distribute card between parties. And you would say the one who uh, get king of spade would win. The adversary may, the malicious party may uh, hide this card in advance in, in his hand. Uh, so to prevent this, what we do instead is that, okay, we distribute cards transparently. Now the cards are distributed transparently, but we hide the identity of the party. For each party, instead of their, own, their unique identity, we use a pseudonym. And what I call pseudonym is, in fact, cryptographically, it's a commitment to a secret S. And since we are go going to go through many phases of uh, randomization and shuffle, R and S, this commitment should be detectable through the randomization step. And the reason that we want it to be detectable is because of the revelation 
that uh, the party should be able to detect himself and reveal himself. To build such commitment, detectable commitment, uh, you see here an uh, example. Uh, you choose a secret S and then you commit to S through U and U to the S power S. And you see that even with randomization, you uh, you would be able to detect this commitment because uh, the second part is always the S power of the first part. So to summarize, we have a list L, we make a list L. This list L would go through this, the parties one by one. Each party that receives list L, they add their pseudonym, their commitment to this list, and then they do R and S, randomize and shuffle. And then they send the list L to the next party, and so on and so on. So this was for the anonymity. Now for the confidentiality. For the confidentiality, we have to hide the data. And for this, we use LGAMAL encryption. Uh, we in can encrypt the data by an encryption public key. Uh, and to preserve the anonymity, we can also add this uh, encryption public key to the list. Uh, and as it is re-randomized, uh, it would remain anonymous. But there is just a, a little, uh, uh, there is just a point here that uh, when you do re-randomization, uh, your secret key would not remain the same. So you cannot decrypt the message after receiving. If your message is decrypted with randomized public key, then how you can decrypt it? Uh, the trick here is that we just add an indicator G to this uh, encryption public key. And then uh, you see that after uh, re-randomization and shuffles by this indicator, uh, you still uh, can do something to uh, decrypt the message. Uh, indeed, after re-randomization phase, uh, the, the final result is what you use for your uh, LGAMO uh, encryption. This would be your new base GA, uh, which tr keep track of randomness is your new base for LGAMO encryption. So we use this indicator to kind of keep track of the randomness and then we use it as the base for the uh, LGAMO encryption. And by this, you can decrypt the message. So far, we have a list L. We added pseudonyms, which are commitment to the S, and then uh, indicator and encryption public key, which would be used for uh, encrypting the message later. And then we randomize and shuffle this list. Uh, note that this is not the end of the story. We are not done. Uh, there is a, a small conflict here and the conflict is with revelation. And the reason is that in the revelation phase, you, uh, the party needs to decrypt and reveal him, uh, himself. And here, uh, if you want to rely on the DDH assumption, the Fehlman assumption, to say that, okay, with re-randomization, my public key is randomized and anonymous. Uh, you cannot uh, have a simulation for the decryption of other phase, other execution of the protocol, because they need the secret key. To go through this problem, uh, we may use different public key for each uh, execution. But then how I can claim, how can I connect the claim to my uh, unique public key then? Uh, the way that we do it is through another commitment, another commitment that com uh, kind of uh, tie the public key unique identity to the claim. 
and this is mainly to prevent men in the middle attack that uh, somebody steal your claim uh, and uh, claim it for himself those uh, what we so far have was is a list L that included commitment uh, and indicator encryption public key that as I said encryption public key are different for each execution and we also have a public estate ST that include the commitment uh, that keep uh, connect the claim to the identity and then each party uh, update this list L and uh, state ST and they send it to uh, the next party. Note that uh, randomization and uh, shuffling is uh, done just over the list L but not over the state. Integrity. For the integrity, uh, each data owner needs to commit to miss to their message and send it, uh, put it in a database. Um, the, uh, there is a point here also that um, because of the confidentiality, this cannot be a simple commitment like you just H of M. It has to be a hiding commitment. So instead, we would use H of M and D. That D is a hiding factor. factor. And later, when the data owner wants to send message to the uh, party, uh, they encrypt message M, but also they encrypt uh, the hiding factor D. And these two M and D both have to be in group G because we are going to use L gamma. Therefore, we have uh, a list which is associated with the party and each element of this list uh, includes uh, pseudonym, randomized pseudonym, randomized indicator, and randomized public. And we also have a database which is associated with the data and uh, it includes all the commitment to the data. And now we just assign these uh, elements of this list and the database uh, by a public be a random beacon. And uh, the allocation is done. So we now we have an allocation between parties and data. Now it's the messaging phase. For the messaging phase, each data owner knows that, uh, okay, my commitment is assigned to a element L of the list. So this element L uh, has an, a randomized uh, encryption uh, public key. I use this uh, public key to encrypt my message and the hiding factor and send it to a pool. To make the extraction of the cipher text from the pool efficient for the party, they also add a flag and the flag is just this uh, randomized public key. And the party, they know the randomized public key, so they just can search for the flag. They don't need to decrypt all the mess the cipher text of the pool. They just search for the flag. And then they just extract the cipher text with this flag. And that's it. Thank you very much for listening to me, and I would be happy to take uh, your questions. Okay, so we have time for questions. No questions? Um, sorry, can you, I've, um, so how would it compare with uh, NIAR? You described this a bit in the talk, but like, what are the advantages and disadvantages between R and NIR? Uh, Non-interactive uh, rotary, you mean? Yeah. 
Okay. Uh, as I said, uh, the main difference is that in their work, uh, they don't mind about assignments, so they don't go through any multi-party to make it random. They just assume there is an authority that knows this uh, assignment, but not router. Ours is different. Uh, our main focus is on the assignment that we try to hide the assignments, but we don't use central routers. Okay, so it's just okay. All right. Yeah. Hello, could you give us some example applications where this kind of technique or this protocol might be uh, useful? Uh, uh, as I said, they already are using uh, this uh, uh, concept of uh, uh, random allocation in uh, uh, assignments of the cases to the court, and it is also used in uh, randomized control trail in clinical uh, research and stuff that they uh, assign a different patient to different research plan and then they check the result of which one is more efficient. But uh, uh, the difference is that uh, the uh, solution that we already have in this uh, real world application is all based on a uh, trusted uh, third party that uh, somebody knows this assignment. Uh, they don't uh, uh, reveal it until uh, the end that everything is finished. But here uh, we presented Aura to kind of keep this assignment uh, uh, hidden without a third authority. And uh, another application uh, that uh, it is already used uh, is in the blockchain for assigning uh, the, uh, the verification of a different smart contract by different parties, group of parties. Any more questions? No? So, okay, let's thank the speaker again. Thank you.